Well, good afternoon, everyone, and good morning for some of you. Um, if you are in a time zone where it's not noon yet, um, my name is Manny Tejeda, one of the program directors at CFES Berlin Pathways, and we're excited today to bring you a, a um, virtual college tour, and this college is Paul Smith's College. We have um, our friend Jessica, who's going to tell you a little bit about the college, um, but as you all know, this is this is part of the 31 for 31 series that we're doing of 31 highlighting 31 colleges um, across the country um, at to our CFES network. So, <clears throat> Jessica, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can introduce yourself and, and share all the great knowledge about uh, Paul Smith. Hi. So hi, everyone. My name is Jessica. Um, I am an admissions counselor here at Paul Smith College. Um, I've been with the institution for about two years, but it shares a special place in my heart. Um, my husband uh, is a student here. Uh, he served 12 years in the military and then decided uh, he wanted to go back to school. And Paul Smith kind of gave him that opportunity uh, in a place to uh, not only learn, but to be himself um, and, you know, get that one on one experience that so many so many students are looking for. So um, holds a very special place in my heart. Uh, but what you're looking at right now on the screen uh, is our campus. So we sit on a lake called Lower St. Regis Lake. Um, the building in the far, the farther away one is our uh, student center. So students have the opportunity to eat sitting out uh, lakeside dining is what we call it because every seat is lakeside. Um, and then the building in the foreground is our library, um, brand new built. It is, it is a public library. So uh, I'll just take you through my presentation here um, and see a little bit more about the college. So this is a map I kind of used to show everyone where we're located. We are in the Adirondack Park of upstate New York. Uh, we're sit in uh, on about 14,000 acres we own. Uh, 12,000 of those acres are student run and managed. Uh, so that means our students are in the field working our land, whether it be through their labs, their classes, um, their extracurricular activities, um, as well as we employ um, quite a bit to do internships over the summer uh, that help keep our land um, preserved and what it is today. Uh, we're the only four year college in the Adirondack Park, um, which means you're here from freshman year to senior year, working the Adirondack Park the entire time um, and learning from our land. Uh, we have, we're about uh, two hours north of Albany um, in general sense, about two hours from Burlington, Vermont, uh, two hours from Watertown, New York, if you're familiar with those, um, our largest airports being Burlington and Albany, but we do have a small airport about 10 minutes down the road uh, that flies in and out of New York City and in and out of Boston direct flights. Um, so just to just to keep in mind um, for some perspective as to where we're at. Um, it's about a six hour drive from Buffalo. Like I said, depending on where you are, I heard someone was joining us from Texas. Uh, this might be kind of a <laughs> kind of a, a broad scale map, um, about six hours of a drive from New York City. So if you say, hey, we're in New York, no, we uh, are not in New York City. We're nowhere near New York City. <laughs> So a little bit of a history of our college. You know, a lot of colleges don't have a rich history the way we do, um, and it's something that we're really proud of. So Apollo Smith um, was from Milton, Vermont. His family came from a family of foresters, um, and he got some opportunity to buy to buy uh, property in the Adirondack Park, and he jumped on it and started his own forestry operation here. Um, and as he was going on with it, he was like, oh, I don't know if forestry is really my thing anymore. I kind of want to do hunting and fishing. So he started his own guide company right on the shore um, of the Lower St. Regis, which was the, the lake that you saw in those pictures. Um, he started his own guide company. And when he met his wife, it turned into a whole um, hospitality operation. What you're seeing in the background of these pictures is his, um, is his hotel that he ran. His wife kind of ran the hotel while he took people out hunting and fishing as part of their guiding. Uh, we were the site of the first hydroelectric dam in the United States. Um, and he did still have the forestry operation kind of in the background of everything hospitality wise. Um, and then we hosted people you know, some of the real big names, Calvin Coolidge, P.T. Barnum was here. We have a, a pond name af named after P.T. Barnum here um, with that. If you ask different people, there's different stories as to P.T. Barnum catching the biggest fish in this pond and all sorts of stuff like that um, as to why it was named after him. Theodore Roosevelt, the Rockefellers uh, and many of much of the land in the Adirondack Park is still owned by Rockefeller. Um, family um, and a lot of it by Paul Smith. So uh, they were kind of neighbors is really what that came to. But 
um, he did take them out hunting and fishing. Um, and then once Paul and Lydia were passed, uh, his son Phelps decided this is what the college, or this is what it was meant to be, was to teach people. Um, and we kind of got our bread and butter programs from uh, forestry and hospitality, a little bit of Paul and a little bit of Lydia, and it have expanded from there. Oh. So we have um, our academic, we have four undergraduate academic programs with 23 bachelor's degree programs. We actually have 25 now. We've actually just got approval earlier this week for two more programs that'll be starting in 2023. So it'll be 25, I have to update the presentation. Uh, five associate's degree programs, 13 minors and uh, two master's degree programs. Uh, that we're really excited about and again i like to point out the pictures that we use because i use them for a reason that is our campus that is our boat launch uh it's a it's a beautiful beautiful spot the first and probably our largest degree program our natural science degree program um that falls in the environment uh, you know environmental science biology um both, like I said, learning from our land in our labs. Our students are constantly out um, on the boats or they're walking through the field. Um, these pictures that you're looking at, that middle one is of students, what they call electro fishing. So um, in layman terms that as the electro fishing is something way beyond my knowledge because I didn't, I didn't get to learn it. Um, they are able to like stun fish to pull them out of the water to examine them and put them back in the water um, without them being harmed whatsoever. Um, but that's so that's what that is. Um, we have degrees in human health and the environment, which basically focuses on the relationship between the two climate change, things like that. We have professors who are some of like the leading researchers in climate change um, working on our campus. If you Google Paul Smiths, you're going to find all sorts of articles about Kurt Steger, and he's been um, doing climate change research for, uh, I think, longer than I've even been alive. So um, crazy, crazy knowledgeable professors. Um, ecological restoration, which focuses on restoring ecosystems uh, back to their natural habitats or preventing um, humans projects, I guess you could say, um, from destroying the ecosystems. Uh, our fish and wildlife sciences, a huge program, people who wanting to, wants to learn the animals and the fish um, in the outdoors. Um, and then our natural science program, um, all fall under the natural sciences umbrella. Environment and society um, kind of focuses on more like the people aspect of um, working with the environment. So natural resource conservation management, we have a lot of students who come to us and say, I want to be a DEC officer. I want to be an econ officer. Well, you do need to know the environment, but you also need to know how to work with people and how to teach them about that. Or I want to be an environmentalist. OK, well, natural resource conservation management teaches you about both sides of things, teaches you about policy procedure, working with people as well as um, working with the environment and the things you need to know um, to talk to the people about. Uh, sustainability, we have a thriving sustainability program. It's nuts. We all of our dorms have um, compost bins in them. So uh, we are trying to be as most sustainable as we possibly can. Um, and we also have a sustainability club that does a lot with writing grants um, and things like that to bring, um, bring projects to campus that uh, focus on sustainability. Recreation and adventure, education and leisure management. That one's always a mouthful. Uh, however, most people refer to it as our rec program. Uh, focuses on things like guiding. So if you want to be an ice climbing guide, if you want to be a rock climbing guide, if you want to run rope parks, if you want to um, be a fishing guide, those are the kind of degrees um, that you would need for that. Um, and then we also have some interesting ones that fall into this category. We have a psychology degree um, and we also have a neuroscience degree um, that are, are rapidly growing. Um, and then integrative study, studies, I think, is an interesting one because it gives you the opportunity to combine multiple of our degree programs um, into one of your own so that you would get a degree in integrative studies. But if you were really interested in two things and you had a career that was set um, under those two, those two models, you could combine two degrees. So we've been talking about all this environmental stuff, right? Well, here's the other side to Paul Smith's, the business and hospitality, like I said earlier, um, kind of the root of Lydia Martin Smith. Um, we have a thriving baking and pastry arts program, uh, fully run student bakery on our campus. Um, so students from day one are learning how to, um, everything from chocolates, cakes, and cookies to breads and pizzas and things that in soups and salads that you would need for a bakery. Um, and we have a fully running bakery on our campus that's open to the public. So if you're ever on our campus on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday during the school semester, um, you can walk right in and buy stuff from the students and you see the students working, you see them baking, you see, um, everything from 
from start to finish. They do everything from ordering the products to making the menu to serving the food. Um, so it's a very it's a very popular program on our campus, um, not only for the students who are in it, but for the students who benefit from its products as well. Um, Sustainable restaurant management is just a restaurant management degree. We've found that in recent years, uh, the culinary track is not actually um, as profitable as you would want it to be, uh, but the restaurant management is. So in that program, you're learning the front of the house, you're learning the back of the house with a little bit of cooking mixed in with them. Kind of the whole spectrum of running a restaurant. Um, hotel and restaurant management kind of falls under that same umbrella, but adds in the hospitality portion of things. Um, and then our culinary management program is also decently uh, large. That is an actual cooking program. So if you have gone to another institution for two years and gotten a culinary degree, you can then come to us um, for some finer tuned um, culinary management skills. Um, but that also ties in the restaurant management portion of things. So we have a student run restaurant on campus also um, that we students put on three course meals for like $10. It's the best thing in the world. Um, again, even if you're not in the program, you tend to benefit from it. Uh, and then we also have um, our management degrees, which are our business degrees, um, also pretty big on our campus. We have concentrations in management, entrepreneurship, esports management, and then sports management. We're very fortunate um, to be so close to Lake Placid, and the, we have the ability um, to partner with a lot of the Olympic sites that are in Lake Placid. And this year, actually, um, we're super lucky that we are hosting the World University Games on our campus. So we'll have about 500 athletes from all over the world staying on our campus uh, that students in that sports management program will be uh, working with. Forestry, uh, our bread and butter. Again, like I said, forestry was one of um, Paul Smith's biggest uh, you know, draws to this area, uh, but we do have a fully operational sawmill on our campus. Um, we have a, what we call our forestry cabin that was built by forestry students that a lot of um, classes take place in. If you ever get the opportunity to come to one of our open houses, um, they usually put hot chocolate and uh, the fireplace lit up there and it's a nice little place to hang out. Um, and depending on what you're interested in forestry depends on what what you what category you fall under or what concentration you fall under, uh, whether you're interested in the actual um, like biology of the soil and the trees and things or you're interested in the management portion of the forest. Um, we have degrees that kind of fit all that. Um, another one that's huge for us um, in an ever growing field is our disaster management and response degree. Uh, we do have a minor in wildland firefighting, so we get a lot of students in that degree who are going out west to fight wildfires, um, or, you know, a lot of students who are down in Florida right now trying to help out from the disaster after Ian. Um, I have a lot of students who <clears throat> have come to me and said, well, I want to do construction. Okay, well, what's more like construction than helping out after a natural, natural disaster? Um, kind of falls in the same realm, but uh, it tends to have a higher paycheck, so. And these are all of our minors. All of them pair really well with most of our degrees. Um, we have some interesting or some very um, common things like bio biology, chemistry, um, our environmental studies, forestry, um, and then some not so common things like maple syrup production. Um, like I said, wildland firefighting. Um, we also have a craft beer studies and management minor. Um, and then GIS, which is one of our most employable minors, which is like the computer mapping of things in the natural world um, for use in project management. Clubs and activities, um, we do have quite a bit of an ever-changing list of clubs and activities. We're a smaller, smaller population on campus. We have about 800 students on our campus. Um, so it's about a 14 to one student to staff ratio. It's a very personalized learning experience. Um, but that also means that the interest for clubs change is kind of ever-changing and um, you know constantly evolving. So right now, this is what we have on our campus. However, all you need to start a club, if there's something on there that you wanted to see that you don't see is five students who are interested in starting the club and uh, one advisor that's willing to support you and they'll give you I think it's $500 towards doing what you want with the club um, but we have a lot of things that are there for fun like chess and disc golf and beekeeping and things like that um, but then we also have a lot of um, activities that are paired with national organizations so the Society for American Foresters um, comes with a national partnership uh, the Society for Ecological Records restoration um, same thing we have a deca chapter we have an ffa chapter uh, things like that so our sports teams uh, we have over 25 sports teams um, ranging everything from basketball soccer 
um, and hockey to some more unique things like we have a bass fishing team, we have a Nordic skiing team, um, and then we also have what's called the woodsman's team. If you're not familiar with timber sports, it's a lot of axe throwing and wood sawing and tree climbing. Uh, and it's actually kind of our biggest sport on campus. A lot of students who are just interested in the outdoors are like, I'm going to give that a try. Uh, and we actually have, um, I think it's three or four different like levels of teams because we have so many students who are interested in that. We have a men's team, a women's team, a co-ed team, a performance team, and then a Jack and Jill team. So uh, it's a pretty big thing on our campus. Applying, I don't know where everyone is at in their high school level, um, but this is kind of just the slide that talks a little bit about our application requirements. Um, we do have our application open currently. So if you're a senior and you're interested, um, the application is open. We're both on Common App and we have our own application. Um, it is free to apply to Paul Smith's. Uh, there is no application fee and that's always how it's been that's not going to change it's a free application um so from year to year you can probably you can count on the fact that we're not charging you for that um we also are a test blind school which means that if you send me your a act or sat scores i'm not even looking at them so don't ever waste your money on that don't send them to me i'm not considering them whatsoever um nothing on a test score can show me what you're going to be able to do uh, here is really what it comes down to. We're a very hands-on school. So um, your ACT and SAT scores um, are not indicative to who you are as a person for us. Um, your letters of recommendation, if you have them, uh, and an essay are not required. However, they're highly encouraged. Uh, like I said, we like to get to know who you are as a person, not as a test score. So that's really great to hear, um, you know, hear what people who know you have to say about you and who you are as a person. Um, and then we require all of your high school transcripts. That's all I need is, all I absolutely need is your application and your high school transcript. Um, other than that, we everything else is optional. Um, and if you are taking any AP, IB, or dual enrollment classes um, with any other college, those will be evaluated um, for your transfer. Typically, if you have a C minus or higher and we can fix it, fit it into your degree program, it's, it's no problem transferring it in. Or if it's an AP or IB class, I think it's a three or above for AP and a four or above for IB. Financial aid. So this is the scary part, right? Um, and you look at a sticker price of a college and you're like, oh my God, who, who can go to those colleges? Um, but right now our sticker price is around $46,000 a year. Um, no one ever pays that price. Um, historically, our merit-based scholarships have gone between ten dollars and $19,000 a year. So every student who applies to Paul Smith and is admitted at, was getting at least $10,000 a year as of last year. I'm not sure what the metrics are yet this year. So don't, um, it, it could be different this year. Um, however, last year, everyone was getting at least $10,000 and up to $19,000. Um, and what we were seeing on typical was after financial aid, after you filled out your FAFSA, um, any scholarships and any extra aid, because we're a private school, we have private money that we give to students to try to make it more affordable. Um, our goal is, if you're in New York State, our goal is um, to make ourselves more compare as most comparable to a SUNY system as we possibly can so that you don't have to choose based off of cost and you choose based off of fit. Um, so we do our best. And last year we were seeing that students were paying between 10 and 19 or 10 and $18,000 a year to come to Paul Smith. So it's between like five and, you know, what did I say? Five and uh, $8,000 a year um, to come to Paul or a semester to come to Paul Smith's. And these are just some of our visit days, right? So if you're interested in coming to visit, uh, we just had an open house that passed, but we have one coming up. We also have a Saturday visit day that's coming up in December. Um, we do do individual tours during the week. Um, and then we have tons of virtual information sessions on our, um, on our website that are individual to the program. So if there was something that kind of piqued your interest uh, in those virtual information sessions, we typically have um, professors from that department come in and speak about their programs and answer any questions if they need, if there are any. And then this is just our social media. I do run all of the social media for Paul Smith. So this is a kind of almost a personal plug for me, but please follow us on social media. <laughs> we have quite a bit. Uh, we're very active on Instagram and um, trying to get more active on TikTok. Um, so please feel free to come, come check us out. And that is just the contact information for the admissions office. And that is all I have for you. Thank you, Jessica. That that awesome. was very good information. Um, yeah. Uh, and I, I, I'm excited to kind of dive in a little bit about some of the stuff you, you talked about. 
the sure. first one, obviously the the culinary stuff. I think yeah. I'm making a point to stop by and try that that uh, three meal course. Yep. Or three course meal, and then yeah. if once I'm done, I I'll get some baked goods from the students. Mm -hmm. But in terms of kind of your program, what would you say are like your your like your top three programs? So I would say our top three programs would be our baking and pastry arts program. Um, I think that's one of our, um, it's a big draw for our students, right? There's not many places that focus on baking and pastry arts. And I don't know where you can really go that you have a class just in chocolate. Um, so <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of students who have that interest who come to us um, and leave to us to go run bakeries or own their own bakeries or things like that. So that's a huge one for us. Um, I would say our natural resource conservation management program would probably fall underneath that as well. Like I said, I have a ton of students who come to me and say, I wanna be a DEC officer, or I wanna be an econ officer. Um, and that's kind of the track that we usually put them on. And then I'm actually gonna give you four because there's two that I'm not sure which would come in, come next. Um, our forestry department is enormous. Um, we are known for our forestry. There's a lot of students who know us only as a forestry school. Um, and I have a lot of students who come up to me and say, my grandfather went to Paul Smith's. And I was like, yeah, he went for forestry, didn't they? And they're like, yeah, he did. And I'm like, yeah, everyone's grandfather came to Paul Smith's for forestry. I know it. Um, <laughs> so uh, forestry and then fisheries and wildlife sciences. Um, our professors really dive deeply into uh, working hands-on and there's not a lot of places where you can do that better than the Adirondacks um, right in your backyard. All we have to do is walk out the door of the classroom and it's like there's a million things standing there for us. Um, I actually last year shadowed a general ecology class uh, where they had me hiking through the woods um, with a measuring tape looking for animal tracks and I was measuring not only the tracks but the distance between the tracks to decide uh, what kind of animal made the tracks and things like that. So um, you don't really the hands-on experience that we were able to provide being that we're right in the middle of the park um, and we have so much land is something that draws a lot of students in. That's awesome. Yeah, we yeah. actually, as I was walking in to, to Boquette, mm -hmm. uh, someone actually, uh, their sibling actually got their master's at Paul Yep, so yep. Awesome. natural resources program, yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I mean, that. that when we talk to students about obviously college and what they'll gain um, and, you know, how that's a path to kind of a career, the hands-on experience, I'm assuming that that's really helping students really get to the next step once they graduate. So can you talk a little bit about maybe some companies or organizations that, that draw a lot of, a lot of your students upon graduation? Yeah, so our students kind of go all over the place, right? We we say we have alumni in all 50 states and it's weird. You'll be walking around. I was in um I was in Washington State last uh, during in April and I had a guy come up to me and be like you're a long way from home and he said apparently was here worked here for like 10 years and then he moved to Idaho and was doing something in Idaho so we have alumni literally all over doing all sorts of different things it really just depends on where you look um or what field you're interested in looking in you know um, like I said we have a lot of students who are working for um for their state departments doing um, environmental conservation and things of that nature. I have tons of students that are fighting wild, wild wildfires right now. Um, I have students out west that are running guide businesses. Um, I had a rep actually recently tell me that she took a trip to Alaska with her family and almost every guide out of the eight guides that they had, five of them told her that they were Paul Smith's graduates. So they were hiking guides, they were um, fishing guides, they were, you know, any boating guides, whatever. Um, they had come to us first and then went on to do, you know, kind of their passion for the outdoors um, in one way or another. Um, and then we have students who have run restaurants. I have a bakery right down the road that just opened that's a Paul Smith graduate. Um, and then several across the state that are graduates and I'm sure in other states as well. Um, you know, people who have owned their, opened their own restaurants, opened their own bakeries. I, I could imagine. I mean, think about <laughs> what a perfect place to yep. kind of start either a, a bake shop or a restaurant mm -hmm. when you have kind of more like a control environment to yeah. really, uh, dial in what you're doing as a business. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And awesome. if you're familiar with if you're familiar with the Palm restaurant, um, in New York City, it's a steak and seafood restaurant. They have one in, in Miami, they have one in New York City and a couple of other big cities across the country. Um, the CEO is an alumni of Paul Smith's. Um, 
from way back when. So <laughs> that's yeah. great. That's yep. great. Yep. So uh, Jessica, I know we're bumping into time. So I want to, I would like to ask this question. Sure. What's a fun fact that nobody would know about Paul Smith that you like to share? Okay, so this is a fun one. And I don't know uh, how well this paints Paul Smith himself, but I also think this is a really smart business move of this man. So um, the picture that I showed you in the beginning of our entire lake, and you could see property out all over. Um, Paul Smith used to own all that back in the day, right? Um, and people like the Rockefellers and um, you know some of the big name people were saying, hey, like we want to buy some of this property off of you. And he would say, okay, sounds good. Um, and he would go in and he would clear cut all the property and harvest all its lumber, sell it to them, sell the property to them after he clear cut it, and then sell the wood back to them to build the houses. So he came in, processed all the wood, sold the land. He was double profiting from the land. Um, so not only was he a good forester and a great hunting and fishing guide, he also uh, was a very intelligent businessman. So that is, uh, I mean, th that is awesome. It's a That's very interesting, uh, interesting Paul Smith fact. So yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so um, any last minute things that you want to want to include to want to share? Thank you for putting the slide of yeah. how students can be in touch. Uh, we have a, a, a couple of classes who are logged in. So uh, awesome. I don't see any questions, um, cool. but this, this would be the time. Go ahead and type it away and Jessica would will answer them for you. Yeah, I just always love to stress. Um, Paul Smith, like I said in the beginning of the presentation, a very special place to me. Um, our teachers, our professors are very dedicated to their hands-on learning and um, their personal relationships with students as well. Um, so there's there's always that connection. And um, depending on where you want to go, they can kind of get you there um, and tailor your classes uh, to be what you want them to be or what you need them to be for your career goal. So um, we've had a lot of success in that area. So. Oh, well, that's awesome. That really yeah. speaks about the community. Yeah, it's very, it's a very tight knit community. So, and like I said, small campus, um, very experiential. We want students out uh, learning from our land. So. That's great. Well, I want to thank you on behalf of obviously CFES and on yeah. behalf of, of those attending and, and watching live. And then those who are going to tune in later on uh, awesome. to the recorded session. So Thank you again, and we look forward to uh, chatting with you soon again. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Um, I appreciate your time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.